Hello, it is May 24th, 2016, and I'm just doing this Pine News update because we want to talk about the Long Island Railroad expansion project right here. Um, for the third track, I attended the hearing tonight, 6 p.m. at Hofstra University, and um, I want to talk about uh, you know what I saw. We took video of the whole thing. We have uh, we have um, the testimony from all the speakers and uh, myself, of course. Now, as I said before, I support this third track plan. I have to say, if Governor Cuomo can get this done, he will get my vote for re-election. All right, that's just how important it is for me. All right. Um, this third track plan with the gray crossing eliminations is a modernization that the main line desperately needs. Uh, the main line as it is right now is woefully inadequate, as I've talked about before. It's very antiquated. Uh, we have these dangerous gray crossings. We have a, because of the two tracks, we have a limitation on just how much service can be provided in the rush hour. And, you know, and it's very hard to uh, really improve anything without the third track there. Unfortunately, there, as you'll see in this video, a number of speakers who think this project are against this project. Uh, one, the, the P Garden City in particular, uh, has shown itself to be the arrogant, racist, uh, you know, narrow-minded uh, town that it is today. Uh, when I listen to the mayor talk, this is the same town that tried to stop affordable housing and lost. Uh, so now they're trying to stop this third track as well. Uh, the mayor actually had the gall to claim, as you'll see in this video, that the reverse peak trains that he sees at Mineola are empty. <laughs> uh, I don't know what train you're on. I don't know what trains you're seeing, but the ones I am I'm on are pretty crowded. Um, so I think that this uh, the MTA has done a very good job in presenting this. Uh, I also spoke with the uh, folks from MTA after after the meeting, after most of the testimony, they were in a separate room. I actually spoke with one of the guys in charge of scheduling and spoke with him about the situation here in Westbury. Now, obviously, it's, it's as I've talked about here before, it's really hard to add service to rush hour in rush hour to for Westbury because of, obviously, the limitations of the two tracks. Um, however, I brought up off-peak. So particularly weekends on the Huntington branch that why don't both Huntington trains stop at Westbury? Uh, and I want to share with you some of the things I've heard. Basically nothing that I haven't heard before. But basically it's because of the meets in Huntington, the fact that there's no yard in Huntington and you know they, they, the trains meet with the Port Jefferson trains uh, and adding even one extra stop could throw the schedule out of whack. And I kind of understand that but I explained to him and he admitted Cold Spring Harbor sees very few riders on weekends, much less than Westbury. So what I suggested, and what they may look into, is having certain trains skip Cold Spring Harbor and having all trains stop at Westbury, which makes a lot more sense. All weekend trains stop at Westbury. The other idea, of course, is when double track is completed on the Ronkonkoma branch, that the Ronkonkoma trains, every other, would stop at Westbury. Some of them would stop at Westbury. So you know, Westbury would serve both by the Ronkonkoma and Huntington branches. So those three extra trains that you see currently right now, once the double track is complete, that could be uh, all the time. All right. I also brought up the uh, the, the, the uh, station itself. You know, uh, we have no security cameras. We have uh, no hardly any seats on the platform. We don't even have a canopy. Considering the amount of people that use the station, it really is a pretty pathetic station. Uh, the waiting room is nice when it's open. Um, but still, you want to, you know, you want to be in a position for when the train comes, and you know, depending on where you're getting off in Penn. So, and for eastbound, that doesn't help the people on the eastbound side because the station house is on the westbound side. So, if you're waiting for a train going east, you basically have to sit on the platform. Um, you know, uh, you know, this is all stuff that will get redone when the third track project happens. And I think this modernization is key uh, to the future of Long Island. And if this modernization God forbid the NIMBYs do get away with actually stopping this. Uh, you're going to see a continued stagnation in the central Nassau region. Uh, one of the things I brought up also and was also agreed with by MTA management is that the Babylon Branch is hot right now. This is where everybody wants to be, as I've talked about before, and that's why it's now so expensive to live there. You really have to be rich to live there. I tried to move there. I tried to move to Belmore, actually, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and you know, you can't find a place. Everything is expensive, and they only want people, they're very particular with the kind of people they want in that town. Uh, as uh, somebody said before, as I told you in the last Pine News, 
these stockbrokers and these rich people moving in only want to live with their own kind. So I'm not allowed to live there. If you're not one of them, then you're not allowed to live there. And yet they get the best train service. So as you can see, when there's a finite resource, the supply and demand kind of gets in the way and messes things up. So if we, this third track project does not happen, you're going to continue to see this South Shore get more and more exclusive, hard to get into uh, on the Babylon branch, and all the mainline towns are just going to stagnate. Uh, you know, uh, we can't attract people. I mean, here in Westbury, we have a lot of new apartments that have gone up. I got to tell you, a lot of them are empty. All right, there's one in particular they just put up uh, right by the train station that's been empty for almost half a year now. They haven't gotten anyone in there. And the poor train service is part of the reason why we're having trouble getting people here. It's going to be the same for the other areas too, like Farmingdale, uh, where they're building the apartments, and the same, same thing there. They're going to be, it's the, the, the lack of train service is going to be an impediment to the growth of these communities. So I think all these people that are, uh, particularly some people in Garden City, Garden City, first of all, Garden City, you have some nerve, all right? The Garden City is served by two train branches. It's got, it's got the main line Huntington stops on, in Huntington, uh, I'm in, in, in New Hyde Park and Maryland Avenue, and then it's got the Hempstead branch, Garden City, Ca Country Life Press, uh, Stewart Manor, uh, you know, it's, it's got Nassau Boulevard. They're served by two branches, and they have some nerve to try to say they're against the project. But what? And then another comment that said, you'll see in the testimony. Uh, let's just get get right to it. All right, let's get to the hearing today. There will be another one tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover that, but uh, I support this project. This project is essential for the, my town to improve. It's essential for other towns to improve. And without it, I mean. Uh, you know, it's it's just going to make me continue to reevaluate reevaluate my future here on Long Island because it seems like I'm priced out of the areas with better train service. And then you have people saying, "Well, these people only want to live with their own kind." I'm sorry, you can't live there. What kind of bullshit is that? You know, so uh, I'll continue to call them out on that. That's my freedom of speech. You know, but uh, I also oh, that's one more thing I wanted to bring up is the security issues. I did also speak with the MTA police about some of that too. You know, they patrol Westbury as much as they can. Um, you know, I really think, and this is kind of an about face from reviews earlier, but I really think with the current situation with the Nassau County Police, we don't have enough police on the street. We need definitely more MTA police resources here, uh, you know, especially, particularly on the main, not main line, right? Hicksville, you have bums hanging out, you have people begging for money. We need probably a new police station, probably in Hicksville or Westbury for the MTA police. This, this area needs it badly, um, you know, uh, but without this third track, I think that much of Central Nassau's future, in particular Westbury, is rather bleak. So we do need this project. This project will shine a light on this area and make it much, much more appealing and increase the supply of good commuter housing on Long Island. So now let's get to the hearing today. Welcome and good evening. Thank you for attending today's public scoping meeting for the Long Island Railroad Expansion Project. My name is Elisa Pika. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Long Island Railroad. I'll be going through the program for today, along with some logistical notes in just a few minutes. But first, I'd like to start by inviting you to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. A flag of the States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, for deliverable liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time today from your busy schedules to be here uh, with us. Your input and feedback for this project is crucial and is greatly appreciated. Today is the first public meeting and part of a robust community outreach process for the Long Island Railroad expansion project that began earlier this year and will continue uh, throughout its duration. In a moment, we are going to show you a video presentation on the proposed project. After that, we will take comments from those who have registered to speak. Uh, if somebody would like to speak and has not yet registered, I invite you to uh, visit our table up front, and there's plenty of opportunity for you to sign up and do so. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the scope of the Long Island Railroad expansion project, and in particular, the draft scoping document that was released on May 5th. There are copies of the report available for your review, and they're also available on our website, www modernli.com, which we encourage you to visit to see not only this scoping document, but other project information. This is the public's first 
public opportunity to comment on the project, but it is by no means the last. There will be more public meetings as the project plan is more completely developed. Right now, we are developing the scope of things to study. What impacts will this project have on our region? That process is called scoping. After these scoping meetings, we will release a final scoping document outlining what will be reviewed in the draft environmental impact statement. That's the next step in this process. For more details about the project, will be released later in the summer once the draft environmental impact statement is complete. And then there will be more public meetings so you can comment on the proposed plan. Your comments are important to us uh, and to the process. Your comments will be entered into the public record as part of the project and they will be reviewed accordingly. Unprecedented outreach has been the cornerstone of the Long Island Railroad expansion project. While we are here in a formal scoping meeting today, there have been many outreach efforts that have been happening. Our project team has had more than 100 meetings with local officials, with business leaders, and other interested parties. And many of the members of our team are here today to listen to your comments. We have also opened a project office at the Mineola train station on the south side platform. It is open regularly and staffed with project staff who are available to talk with you, answer your questions, uh, and have any discussion you would like to have concerning the project. And we've also developed a project website where people can provide comments 24 hours a day at their convenience and also seek project information. Finally, we have visited all residential properties that share a property line with the Long Island Railroad. As you can see, this is a very different project from past proposals. Just a brief, this is just a brief, they're doing a little overview and I just, I don't, I have to talk because I don't want to get copyright because there was music in there. Um, there's just talking about basically, this is going to keep the third track within the existing right away. No residential property takings will be needed for this. And all seven grade crossings will be eliminated. It will take advantage of the better, faster, and more in innovative construction methods to reduce impacts on the community. It shows a map, uh, basically how uh, there'd be less waiting, and if a train breaks down, it won't cause the same kind of headaches that we currently get right now. As you can see, that's what it's going to look like, diagram. And again, the train grade crossings cause numerous problems uh, with, you know, with danger, you know, the noise. I mean, how can anyone be against a quieter town? It's going to make things quieter. This is a win-win situation. And for those who don't like being near the tracks, well, you bought the house there. Now I'd like to introduce you to those joining me on the dais, representatives from the Long Island Railroad, New York State DOT, and our hearing officer for the public comment portion of our meeting today. To my right is Mr. Mark Bocamazzo. He is a design engineer in Region 10 from the New York State Department of Transportation. Next to him is Mr. Ed Dumas, Long Island Railroad Vice President of Market Development and Public Affairs. And at the end of the table is Donna Betty, Long Island Railroad Chief Planning Officer and our hearing officer for this evening. I will now turn the meeting over to Donna. Thanks, Elisa. Good evening, everyone. This scoping meeting is an opportunity to hear from you regarding the topics you think should be studied as part of the project's environmental review process. In order to give public comment, we ask that you sign up at the front desk. You're also asking that you limit your comments to three minutes so that we could hear from as many people as possible. Again, this meeting is not the only opportunity you will have to comment on the project. You can also continue to provide comments at the project office by mail or online through June 13th. Additional public meetings will be held in a few months when more details about the project are released with what's called a draft environmental impact statement. We also have representatives here from Long Island Railroad and New York State DOT available to consult with you on the project in the next room. If you prefer to give comments privately, you can sign up at the front desk to give comments to a private sonographer who will also make sure they're entered into the public statement. Because this is a formal scoping meeting and we are entering your comments into the public record, we will not be responding to your comments or answering your questions directly. However, we do have staff in the other room who are available to speak with you. 
If you have any special needs or concerns, please find a staff member and we will do our best to address them. And just one more thing, kindly place your cell phones on silent for this meeting. Just a reminder to all speakers, as I said before, we have three minutes to comment. You will see a yellow light when there's only sec 30 seconds left. So Good evening. My name is Janelle Horan, and I proudly serve as the Vice President of the Floral Park Board of Education. I am here on behalf of 1,600 pre-K-6 six students and about 300 employees who are part of the Bell Floral Park Bellrose School community. Our community pays close attention to local civic matters, particularly those involving the education of our children, and we are deeply concerned regarding this immediate and long-term impact that the, proposed, that the proposed addition of the third track will be. Although these concerns stem from many issues, we are most disappointed that our school community has not been included in the planning or specifics of the proposed Long Island Railroad MTA third track project. So far, in all of the public documents furnished and all the discussions that have taken place, the fact that two elementary schools will be directly impacted has never been mentioned once. It is becoming increasingly evident that those specifics do not include consideration or sensitivity for the negative environmental, educational, or infrastructure impact on the fragile and complicated nature of providing a safe and secure setting for 1,600 elementary schools uh, students. It appears that the simple task of arriving to and leaving from school will be a logistical nightmare as traffic is rerouted for an undetermined length of time. We currently use one set of buses to service three elementary schools in our district. Timing is essential as these buses are sequenced to drop off at one school and then circle back and pick up at the next. Even a five minute backup becomes an incremental delay at the school. The budget impact to change this would approach $2 million to service our students with additional buses and drivers. How are we to accommodate the inevitable traffic delays caused by crossing projects? Noise, vibration, and distraction during construction will be a real challenge that will affect our students and staff. How are we to continue to conduct an effective educational program when construction is taking place literally in our backyard? Air quality is a health issue. Dust, debris will be constantly airborne. It has already been established that the soil around our tracks has contained toxins such as mercury and arsenic. What will be done to remediate, monitor, and proactively account for the health and safety of our students and staff? Location of staging during construction will have an immediate effect on our parking and residence around the John Lewis Child School and exacerbate an already delicate balance in that area. Our John Lewis Child School has depended on the shared use of the Creedmoor Spur for both parking and play area for decades. What will happen to that area during and after construction? Will our children be safe? What will be going on? Going forward, the increase in rail traffic, whether it be passenger or freight, raises the specter of a more potential for mishap and unsolved problems. And throughout the entire unveiling of this project, there has been a constant inability to answer the simplest of our questions. What will it ultimately look like? Where will it go? And when and how long will it take? To be clear, our concerns are real. We take seriously the educational stewardship entrusted to us and are understandably perplexed that such a cavalier approach has been taken without considering our schools. Please understand that we are not against progress. We are, however, not in favor of progress at any cost, especially at the cost of the well-being of our students. Thank you for this opportunity to present our concerns. Our next speaker is Thomas D'Ambrosio. Good evening, and thank you for your time. Um, I'm strongly in favor of this project. I live in Huntington Station right by the train. I know all about trains. We need to become a first world nation again and start building infrastructure. This is fantastic. It's gonna increase our capacity. Uh, all the employment trends are going from the city out, and we need a long-term growth trajectory. Otherwise, Long Island is not gonna be competitive with the rest of the world. Um, I would just encourage the, uh, the, the public to get out and speak in favor of these things because 
we, the public officials need to hear that people are in favor of doing positive things uh, you know, for Long Island in terms of its growth and economic development. I would say a couple of things. The advantages are obvious. Um, beside the increase in transportation, uh, the reducing of pollution, uh, speeding up of the trains potentially. I'm thinking if you're going to take out six grade crossings, I know your maximum speed is 79, but you may not be hitting that right now. The ride is going to be a lot smoother, and the amount of people that commute to this city every single day who have to suffer when there's a signal problem or when there's a disabled train is really tremendous. And I think a lot of them can't afford to be here because they're working all day, um, trying to earn a living to you know afford this nice lifestyle we have out on Long Island and they certainly would appreciate um, the governor and the MTA moving forward on this. We, I particularly was impressed with the Tappan Zee project actually getting from nowhere to getting this thing off the ground and completed and I would like to see that happen in the future. Also I think what you guys could do is, in terms of projecting for the future on the website, put something on there as far as east side access, the train yard edition, so we have a hypothetical what the train schedule would be like, what the service levels would be like five and ten years out if we're able to do all the right things. So thank you for your time and consideration. Ralph Pascuso. Good evening. Um, I'm just a simple homeowner in Westbury, and I've just endured about a year of track work and construction up the block from my house when they rebuilt the Ellison Avenue Bridge. Now they're going to expand and do this extra work. I mean, they could have planned it a little bit better, either delay the reconstruction of the bridge or do this work at the same time. Now I'm going to have to endure all kinds of construction behind my house all over again for who knows however long it will take. And then I have questions about these potential retaining walls that you might install on the edge of the um, railroad property. Because um, at, at, at present, my uh, property is above the, um, the railroad. So um, I wanna know if these uh, retaining walls, if they're gonna be deep enough or tall enough to hold in the land. We don't want any kind of like uh, landsliding or um, or the walls falling down. And then, as it is right now, the property behind my house has not been upkept or uh, kept up by the railroad in years. So it's all overgrown with uh, poison ivy, poison oaks, thorns, and then there's all kinds of garbage. So will that also happen after these walls go up? And and then you can't even identify if you're going to add a third track on the north side of the current tracks or the south side of the current tracks, you guys, just, you haven't even determined what the plans are exactly. And depending on how that goes, I don't know if that really affects me being on the north side of the property or if it's not going to affect me if you install the, the additional track on the third on the south side of the property. So I'm just. I'm just trying to get some answers on all these what ifs. And, um, and if you do build, let's say on the south side of the property, with the, uh, the additional or the new track, and it was mentioned in the other room that a retaining wall might just go up on that side. I believe you should put a retaining wall also on the other side of, uh, of the property. Because as it is, uh, around 10 o'clock at night, there's usually a freight train that goes through on the main line, and it is quite loud, and, and it, everything shakes and everything like that. So, I mean, I imagine with an extra track, you're going to have more freight trains or more trains going through, and there'll be more noise and more vibrations. So, the additional retaining wall on both sides will probably help and you know control things. That's all. Good evening. I'd like to thank you for holding this meeting and allowing the public to offer their comments concerning the proposed third rail project. My name is Dennis Feeney, a lifelong resident of Nassau County, a resident that has both traveled by train on the main line 
and driven through the area as a motorist to get to work and to other destinations. It is very obvious in this area of Western Nassau County, where the majority of the work will be performed, that there are glaring deficiencies to the Long Island Railroad infrastructure. Many of the bridges are narrow and dilapidated or antiquated condition, and obviously reached their point in time for replacement. Grade crossings at several locations also need to be eliminated. Faulty gates, errant drivers are just some of the concerns for the elimination of these dangerous on-grade crossings. By making these improvements, traffic congestion will ease, safety on our roads will improve, and we'll have the updated infrastructure that we all deserve in Nassau County. In addition to the infrastructure improvements, the construction of the third rail along the main line will help ease congestion on our trains, shorten our commute times, and allow us to take full advantage of the east side access project when completed. As fare paying customers, it is unfair that we must often stand during the morning commute when a seat would help us better prepare for the work day ahead. It is unfair that we must be forced to stand after a long day at the office or on the job because the train is overcrowded. The addition of the third rail seems like the only viable solution to help eliminate overcrowding on our trains. It is necessary and we all deserve it. This is going to be a mega project that will run through one of the most densely populated areas of Nassau County. Undoubtedly, construction will negatively affect some residents and businesses that live and operate within the corridor. However, the MTA and DOT have done a great job in recent years on other projects built in this area, being cognizant of homeowners and businesses' concerns and lessening the impact while construction is being performed. We need to trust the MTA and DOT that they will do their best, do their best in their planning and coordination, and all of their associated personnel will do their best to have the same results on the third rail project. In conclusion, when all the improvements are done, capacity on our trains increased, safety improved on our roads, we will look back and say that the addition of the third rail is one project that has vastly improved the quality of life in this part of Long Island. I'd like to thank the MTA and Governor Cuomo for proposing this project. The traffic flow and safety improvements are needed. The extra capacity on our trains is needed. The time for this project is now. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. One of the issues I think Long Island has with it comes to transportation is an extreme lack of not just reverse peak service. I know I work in Suffolk County, I live in Nassau County. It takes me about 45 minutes to go approximately 25 miles. For comparison, at a distance of about three times more, it only takes me about an extra hour to go all the way to Dutchess County, New York. It, sh it shouldn't be that way. Also, another issue that I think this project will help resolve is I, I, I read Newsday, I read uh, Daily News, I read a lot of newspapers, and I'm getting a little disturbing seeing how much uh, drunk driving accidents there are. And as you can guess from my t-shirt, I have traveled on a lot of trains. In fact, just last month I took a train trip. I was in Europe, and quite frankly, when I see people who are under the influence of something riding a train, I feel a lot safer than them driving next to me. And also, getting back to me being in Europe. I travel between Munich and Nuremberg. If anyone is familiar, they are two of the biggest cities in Bavaria, or southern part of Germany. They have either four or as much as six tracks in the corridor between Munich and Nuremberg. And they were basically built through almost the equivalent of a forest preserve in some areas. Now, we all, now I know that some people might think, well, why, uh, why it's gonna affect me uh, negatively. And also I uh, studied other projects and in Los Angeles they have something called Eat Play Shop. It is a program run by the Los Angeles County MTA where basically they promote businesses next to the projects. In some cases they have project meetings there. I know um, on one of LA's big projects, the Regional Connector, a proposed transit tunnel underneath downtown LA, they recently had basically lunches with the community where the workers go to a restaurant, and they basically meet the community, they meet with business owners to sort of get them to buy in. 
And that might be a good idea for uh, both uh, agencies, MTA and DOT. Also, um, one of the issues that a lot of people have, have raised in the press has been the issue of noise. Now, when I was a youngster, I went to school in New York City. My school's gymnasium was approximately 12 feet from an elevated transit line in, on Jamaica Avenue that had trains running approximately every 10 minutes. And I was told that that building is pretty much soundproof. So maybe uh, helping neighboring businesses, neighboring residences, by soundproofing equipment and materials would be a good idea. Thank you. thank everybody for uh, being part of this program because it would be so good to this community and to Nassau and Suffolk County. I know I was growing up in this neighborhood. I boxed in the PAL. I wrestled. And uh, I had a broken up family. So this project would bring a lot of work to the community. So the kids that grow up, I know somebody was speaking about you know, the kids of the community and the kids of the school. Well, those kids gotta grow up and they have to get jobs. And Nassau and Suffolk County has no jobs for people, no good paying, prevailing wage jobs. That's what we need in this community, that's A, so that we can keep the teachers to keep working, to keep everybody moving forward. Instead of going backwards, we're always going back over here. We want to go forward. I've worked with the MTA. I'm a truck driver. And if you ever drove a truck, and it's a low bed truck with a trailer, and you have the crossings that are down on the ground, and you cross over those, your truck can hit the bottom of it, and it can get stuck, which is very dangerous. And also would be very dangerous for a train to hit the tr truck which you guys want to lift, right? You want to lift the, uh, the tracks, which is great. And we thank you for that because it would make a lot more safety for kids crossing also. We always want to think about the kids and the future of the kids of this community. We need jobs. People need jobs. We need kids to grow up and to have jobs like yourself, like myself, that I had to go in the ring and box for my whole life to get noticed, to finally get a job, because my father didn't have a job. My father wasn't a working man like the average guy. You know what I mean? So what we need to do here in this, we need to build infrastructure so people can have decent wage jobs, instead of just saying, oh yes, we're gonna do this and that. If it's in your backyard, the MTA always does a great job with the environment, safety, and they always do the right thing by everybody in the community. I've never seen any job. Also, real quick, in the uh, 1970s on Herrick's Road, I remember there was nine people that died from a train hitting it because the tracks weren't lifted. This is what we need. We don't need no more people getting hit by trains. So we thank the MTA, we thank everybody if we could do this project so that no more people will get hurt and we know you'll do a safe job. Thank you very much. I come here as a resident of the village of Westbury to voice my support for this modernization project. As someone who is unable to drive, I depend on the Long Island Railroad to get around and the increase in service, particularly in the reverse peak direction, will help my situation greatly. The third track and the elimination of grade crossings will mean a more reliable main line. And right now, service as it is on the Huntington and Ronkonkoma branches is woefully inadequate, especially in rush hours. In the Long Island Railroad's latest ridership report, these two branches experience the most rush hour crowding. In comparison, the modern Babylon branch, which has no grade crossings, has the least crowding of the four major branches. It is no wonder that Babylon com branch communities are now in high demand by commu commuters for the frequent and reliable service along with modern stations 
and thus it has now become very expensive to live in many of those towns. The current situation here in Westbury is unacceptable. Hour long waits in between trains outside of rush hour, hardly any platform seating and no canopies over our platforms during inclement weather. Even in rush hours, the waits between trains can be as much as 40 minutes. Considering how busy our station is, we are not getting our fair share. We don't even have security cameras. No doubt this project would mean a redesigned station and more service. I honestly do not know how anyone could oppose this project, especially with growth in many downtowns like mine, along with Mineola and Farmingdale. I urge you to start work on this project as soon as possible, although some improvements, such as half-hourly weekend service, at Westbury could be done right now since hunting trains already run every 30 minutes but only half of them stop at Westbury. Many in our community rely on public transportation to get around and the current situation is a great hardship for myself and others in this community. It's time the railroad start treating all its riders more fairly and this third project goes a long way toward that goal. Thank you for your time. I'm a uh, environmental engineer with a firm of GEI consultants for engineers and scientists. Uh, besides being an environmental consultant, I'm also on uh, the board of directors for the American Railway Development Association, uh, the Railroad Environmental Conference Planning Committee, <clears throat> New York City Brownsfields Partnership. I'm a member of the Energy Partnership and a member of the Right Track for Long Island Coalition. I've been working for providing consulting engineering services to the, to the railroad industry since the late 1980s. I've always lived on Long Island, uh, so this sets the perspective for my comments. I fully support the third track program. I think that the benefits that will be provided to commuters, to Long Island residents, the business, for Long Island's quality of life is, is tremendous. If we decide not to change, we essentially stagnate, stagnate and we slide backwards. I fully expect that this third track project will be thoroughly vetted in the uh, EIS process and all of the comments and questions will be well explored and, and, and responses laid out. So I feel that the, the overall project will do what it can to protect against human health environmental impacts. My own children have moved off of Long Island in large part because of the arduous and at many times uncertain commute on the Long Island railroads. If we as homeowners and people who live on Long Island don't take steps that will make our area attractive for people to want to stay, just like myself who have owned a home for many years, we get to a point in our lives when we may want to trade in that and get cash so we can move on, we may find that people are not available to buy our homes at the value that we had thought we would have built into them and we will be in a lot of trouble in terms of, of where we go next in our lives. So I think there are tremendous benefits. This is essentially a watershed moment and when you look at how this completes or works together with the overall infrastructure that is being rebuilt in the whole New York metro area, it's essential that we on Long Island allow this to happen. Leo Stimler, uh, Huntington Road, Garden City, New York. I'm strongly opposed to this project. And um, my first uh, comment is about um, this brochure that you gave out. I, I find it's, it's inaccurate. It says, and I quote, this project will enable two directional train service for the first time during peak hours. Well, your own train schedule shows that there are at least 10 or 11 trains that are reverse commuter trains that are eastbound uh, at Mineola. So it's not accurate that there are no uh, two direction train service during peak hours. There are 10 trains or 11 trains. And when I stand on the platform at Mineola in the morning, those trains going east are empty, virtually empty. There are a few people on them, but they're virtually empty. I would hope that you would communicate to the governor that instead of spending 1.1 billion, which is what Newsday says this project will cost, I'd rather that he put that money into fighting the political corruption in Albany. And uh, also uh, use the money to uh, reduce our sales tax. That's what I would prefer. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Mayor Nicholas Espinosa. Mayor Scopia. Espinosa Scopia, thank you. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to speak. Uh, I have attended uh, various sessions at New Hyde Park with our neighbors uh, where presentations were made, extensive presentations, uh, about getting rid of the grade crossing in New Hyde Park, uh, Covert Avenue, and 12th Street. Uh, the uh, staff that was there was very helpful. Uh, they took our suggestions and uh, you know, said that the, essentially that when you look at the diagrams, it's pretty much what we had suggested. Uh, the problem was is, is nobody ever really told us just exactly what benefit Central Nassau County is going to get out of this. Nobody seems to be able to show us any kind of a plan. Uh, we hear from Roush that this is going to be a great economic boom, but we don't really know how or why. Nobody really knows how many more trains are going to stop uh, at Mineola or Hicksville or New Hyde Park, the rest of the stations along the main line. And it's many of the people that uh, I've spoken to just think that this is nothing but uh, a third track to service Suffolk County. The main thing that we can't understand is that the president of the railroad, Mr. Nowakowski, came out prior to the announcement that we wanted to do this third track and said the real problem with the Long Island Railroad and why there are delays is the totally archaic switch system that exists outside of Jamaica. We also need a second track to run Kankama, we need electrification to Port Jefferson, etc. This apparently is not something that there is in the plan. We don't know whether it's happening concurrently, before, or after. The grade crossings, which is something that we've asked for for many years, um, they're not going to happen unless we have a third track. The, uh, third, the grade crossing at Roslyn Road, uh, which we're very, some, those of us who lived in the eastern section of Garden City and Mineola that are very familiar with, I believe that took about three years to finish for one grade crossing. Um, we just don't see what the economic benefit is going to be to Central Nassau County, which will bear the burden of the disruption. We don't know where the staging areas are going to be for the equipment. Uh, this entire process was rushed. It is very unfair. There, we should have had more time to prepare to come to these scoping sessions. And we certainly, the people, should have had more time to reply. Not, I believe, what is it, three weeks? from today that we have to reply. That just isn't right. It isn't fair. Uh, we are very much in line with our neighbors in Mineola, New Hyde Park, Floral Park, uh, South Floral Park, and Stewart Manor in opposing this project. And I certainly hope it will be reconsidered and the switches outside of Jamaica and the other important uh, uh, repairs and improvements are done before anyone considers a third track. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dorothy Episcopia. I live at 38 Clayton Road in Garden City, and I'm a past president of the Eastern Property Owners Association of Garden City that represents about 40% of our population. I've been involved in this kind of thing and in civic matters since 1976. I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but I am going to tell you in listening to this and knowing what I know about your very brief comment period. I have never seen anything or heard of anything so disingenuous that it affects so many people. And why do you say that this plan will not take any houses, will not take any business properties, without a definitive thing for people to look at? It's my understanding that this is you're going to plan this as you go, unless you suddenly come up with plans, specific plans. There's no way to know that you're not going to take houses that in the end, or property, or anything that belongs to other people, which you can do as a railroad. I have a serious problem, and so do many other people who know what they're talking about, that you are not allowing more than a couple of weeks with these vague plans. I do not like the fact that you're tying in the grade crossing eliminations with, you have to have, we have to have the third track to have grade crossing eliminations. They're two different things. And the fact that the switching situ situation at Jamaica Station is so abysmal, 
that really does need to be fixed first. Unless, of course, the railroad would like to be held liable for the first fatal accident of trains when that totally fails altogether. That's all I have to say. I am opposed to this at this time because of the way this is being handled. Thank you. Oh, right. Uh, my husband reminded me because we attended these last scoping sessions the first time around 10 years ago. There were very precise, very specific presentations. People were spoke at the, these um, sessions, as I guess we're doing now, but very well attended. And the comment period was at least about 90 days. That was fair. This is not fair. That's all I can tell you. Not fair at all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, uh, what's that? Uh, my name's Scott Miller. Uh, I haven't heard anything about parking in regard to this project. Uh, I guess the aim is to increase ridership, but I haven't heard anything about parking. I go to Westbury, parking there is already pretty poor with the elimination of more spots due to construction next to the lot. Uh, they just raised the price on the lot, and now they're raising the price on the meters. Uh, I used to park at the uh, Hicksville train station in the Broadway Mall lot. Uh, they said they were under threat of towing. They never did. I haven't parked there in a while, and I think they are towing, so I haven't heard anything on parking. I saw a little brochure about it, a little sign uh, for such a big project to not talk about parking, I think is uh, not that great. Uh, what other people said, I think the whole LIRR needs a lot more money uh, than this. I mean, I'm for this third grade uh, this uh, rail, but the whole the whole system needs money. I mean, the train I take seems like it's from the 70s. The lights go out on it. I can't even read the paper on it. I mean, it's at random. It's just, I, I like to call it the good train. Just uh, just making a joke because it's so bad. Uh, so yeah, pretty much the whole, the whole system needs more money. And what other people said, not necessarily against this, but this does seem, pardon the pun, that's being railroaded down our throats that, all right, here we go, construction's about to happen. Uh, just what I'm gonna say is, in, in conclusion, that uh, parking is very important and the whole system just needs more money. Thanks. Thank you. The building is right on the tracks. I'm not going to discuss about the noise and all well, the issues that the people talked about. I want to talk about the economic conversation about what the governor wants to do along our road and wants to do. The proposal is to build a 10 mile track, third track, for about 1.1 billion, probably go up to $2 billion at the end of the day. And will that grow Long Island? Now, I work for a company that just built a brand new office building off the LIE. We're not by the train station. 1,200 employees come by car every day. They come from Brooklyn, they come from Queens. There is no connection. The only way to go is to the train station, either Huntington or at Farmingdale. Well, the bus system, Suffolk Transit City Transit, sorry, Suffolk County Transit and Nassau County Transit do not connect. So you're gonna have a problem with that to begin with. I would prefer the governor to take that money. The railroad definitely needs the money. One area I can remind the railroad is that you had a blizzard this year. This year, It took you two days to dig out the railroad. Why don't you take one of your train yards and cover it? So this way, the railroad would be able to get the trains out on time. Because remember, the third track's not gonna help you dig those trains out. I think also, um, you maybe use that money to build an express train, high-speed train, from Manhattan to Montauk. That would actually give an economic boom to out east and create jobs there. Um, I'm not against helping the railroad. The railroad needs money, definitely. It's a good, reliable source. Why not build a train line to Connecticut and allow us to connect to Connecticut now to bring jobs to Long Island? Because many of the employers are struggling finding good employees. So there's a lot of opportunity that the railroad could actually use the money for instead of spending $1.1 billion to $2 billion on a 10-mile stretch. 
It's not going to expand Long Island at all. It will not create new jobs here in Long Island because it's very difficult for employees to get here with the present system. That third track will not do anything at all. So I'm just asking the Long Island Railroad and the governor to take that money and use it for more important things that the railroad definitely can help us with. Connecting to Connecticut, getting a high-speed train into Long Island from, from Manhattan. These are the things that we need to do. And obviously one of the other person mentioned something very important, is you want people to use the train. Well, then they need parking. That's very important. Only Mineola, Hicksville, and a couple of stations have that. And the governor found $2 billion. That's great. So why doesn't he lower the train fares for all the commuters now? I'm sure they would like to take advantage of that $2 billion. Thank you very much. Opposed to the third uh, rail improvement? Uh, I do think we can say your name. Oh, I'm sorry, Virginia LeCarrie. Thank you. I do think we need improvements to the railroad. But I think the third rail at that location is redundancy. Any issues at any of the crossing would shut down all of the rail, both ways. Um, the um, gentleman before who spoke about the weather, snow, that wouldn't solve that. Uh, all the uh, grade crossings as they stand now, all the designs are undesirable. They're too steep, too much of an incline, and very confusing, and also affect all the areas in which the children play in the streets. Because the one crossing, 12th Street, would then spill out all the traffic to Covert Avenue and New Hyde Park Road. And all our children play in those streets. So that would be an issue also. Um, the construction, for the long-term construction, would also be a danger. I work in construction, so I know that OSHA regulations are not followed most of the time because the schedule is the most important thing in a construction project. And safety is the backseat. It's costly. And ultimately, we pay the price. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, channels, I'm not sure which. That the railroad plans to rehab the Wantaw station, just the Wantaw station. And the report said that that rehab is going to take two years. So I'd like you people to please thank everyone to thank you about the length of time the railroad takes to complete a project. If the projected time to rehab only one station, not build it, rehab it, is two years, I would like to know how long this project is supposed to take. That's the point. We, we've seen too many projects done by the railroad take too long. And then I, I forgot to mention that, so thank you for letting me do that. All right, so this is just in the, I went to the room after, you know, afterwards went to this room where I spoke with some, you know, people from the, the MTA and the Long Island Railroad, and they were very helpful. Uh, and here I'm showing you some of the diagrams. There's plenty of information. I don't know what these people are complaining about because there's plenty of information and description as to how things are going to look. And you can see the full document in the link below on this video. Plenty of uh, of great things are going to come out of this project, and, you know, it would be a shame if these NIMBYs would stop this project and get away with this, and so, because that's what they are. The MTA is being completely transparent, completely open, plenty of information available, tons of information available, diagrams, uh, we're going to look at some diagrams on that, what things would look like after the um, modernization project. Um, various uh, communities. That's the covert uh, crossing right there. Nicely done. Uh, right now there's a crossing there. It'll be gone. Showing some more diagrams here. I think this is New White Park. Where the tracks would go. They're showing, they're showing everything. I mean, they're being completely forthright in all the information and all the, um, you know, the, the Diagrams and everything, though. I wish they would have shown what the Westbury 
train station would have looked like. But obviously, uh, this is just the very beginning stages. But, I mean, they've provided plenty of information for people here. Plenty of information, plenty of diagrams here for people. As you can see, plenty of, uh, of diagrams, and plenty of information. Some crossings will be closed off. Most will be, you know, a lot of them will be eliminated through a bridge or an underpass. This is what Mineola is going to look like after the renovation, I believe. Main Street. There'll be a new pedestrian bridge. Be nice and modern. Look at that. Nice and modern. How can anyone be against that? There you go. Nice and modern. You really got to be a damn fool to be opposed to this project. That's all I have to say. Another diagram, Mineola. They give a ton of diagrams to Mineola, by the way. That's what it's going to look like. You can see the uh, new pedestrian bridge there on the east end. And this is what the the new underpass will look like at Willis Avenue. Very nice. You can see there's uh, another diagram. There's tons and tons of it. Tons and tons of diagrams, and you can see them all in the document below at the link at the link in the description. Um, how can anyone claim they haven't uh, provided enough information? I don't know, because there's plenty of information here. Trust me. you can see. Now they're showing the School Street crossing here in Westbury. That would be changed. That's what it's going to look like. I just walked past that, but that's what it's going to look like when they're done. So again, you can see all this in the link below. All the documents to this. Very modern. This is going to be one of the best things to ever happen to our area. Ever. And uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that these NIMBYs don't get in the way. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. The last thing I talk about is just, this is talked about how the great crossings actually cause the, the delay, tr delay traffic. Now, when the great crossings are eliminated... Traffic will be able to move much easier, and there will be less congestion, and it will be safer. So, again, these uh, show you what, uh, what, what, what the changes would be. There's a lot of information. But again, you can look at all this in the document below. I urge you to uh, click that link. It's going to load a PDF file. So, that is about it for this long video. Thank you for watching, and get on board the train of progress.